Welcome back to the Pet Place Radio Show on Retro 1260. I'm Marie Hewitt, and I'd like to introduce a gentleman that I had the privilege to meet at a recent pet event in Orange County. It's David Edelstein. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having us, Marie. And you also brought some buddies with you. I brought with me Team Pitiful. I, this is Forrest <laughs> and Pitiful. Little Days and Mr. Kane. Forrest, Little Days, and Mr. Kane. And these are all... They're all, they're all pit bulls and pit bull mixes. Okay. Uh, Forrest is actually a mastiff pit bull. He is uh, pretty American, big. American pit bull terrier. Mm-hmm. Days is yellow lab and pit bull terrier and mix. She's and she's a little smaller. And she's a little smaller. She's about 45 pounds. Okay. And Kane is my only purebred. He's American Staffordshire okay. Terrier. Okay, and he's a pretty big guy. He's coming in at about 86 pounds. And uh, these guys are all super well behaved. They're all just laying on the floor here and... Just acting like sweethearts, and I know that they met all the the radio staff uh, here a little earlier. And, oh, and they made fans all the way from the elevator <laughs> all the way up. <laughs> and our, our earlier guest on the show met him too, and she yes. fell in love and got lots of kisses from, always, from your little always. dogs, your big dogs. <laughs> and so these guys are not at all the picture of what people think of when they think of pit bulls. No, they're far from what you'd see on the eleven o'clock news or on the on the cover of the L.A. Times. Yeah. Far from it. And and for me, this is what a pit bull is like, the ones that you have with you. They're beautiful dogs. They're loyal dogs. They're well-trained and friendly. The breed was actually referred to as America's dog up until about the 1930s, 1940s, uh, through World War II. Uh, there's some of us in this country that are actually trying to restore that name, uh, restore the name of Pitbull as America's dog again. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason why, one, they're getting such a bad rap, it's a very, very cliche, but they're getting a bad reputation uh, because of the very irresponsible few. Um, but they are, they were originally bred to be a general purpose dog. Uh, in the British Isles way back in the 1600s. Uh, slowly as they immigrated and were breeds were mixed and brought to the United States, they found, because they're a terrier, they're a hardy dog, this is a good dog for fighting. This is a good dog for breeding. Well, I know my grandmother told me that she always had terriers growing up, so I pictured these little yippee terriers, you know? Right. But as I looked through family albums, every single terrier that she had was a pit bull. Was a pit bull. And they were big old happy dogs with happy dog smiles, and, and they were exactly like the dog you would see on Little Rascals or on the, the, RCA, the RCA dog, dog. and Theodore Roosevelt's dog and yeah. Helen Keller's dog and Michael J. Fox's dog. and Yeah, they were just, yeah. you know, goofy family pets. And, and I'm just so disappointed in people who use these dogs in a way that, that creates a problem. It is. It's a, it's a serious problem. The, the dynamic surrounding this breed is just huge uh, between the irresponsible human element. Uh, we've got, no, no offense to you guys, the media and, mm-hmm. and what they have, uh, they've kind of ridden on the back of this breed and getting the, the headlines and the sensationalized you know, flash news at 11. Um, the government has kind of stepped in more at the city, state, and county level, more at the municipal level and How state so? level. Well, in the entire state of Ohio, there's a ban on the breed. You're okay. not allowed to have this breed in that state at all. We're in the process of changing that. We're actually at a cornerstone right now where there is a lot of change going on. There's a new bill going to the House floor uh, that everybody's supporting, and we're writing our congressmen, and we're, we're getting everybody to kind of gang in on this one. So um, what happens if you've had this wonderful family pet, and all of a sudden you're your city or your county bans it. What a lot of the city individual municipalities are doing is they'll they'll either do a grandfather, but they but with stipulations. You need to carry one million dollar of homeowners insurance. The dog cannot go out in public without a muzzle. Wow. Um, you've got to put up X amount of feet of fencing. You've got to put signage up, but only this breed. Whether the dog did anything or not, only this breed. And so it it's still be the discriminatory. And sweetest dog in the world, like, and it can still like be your the sweetest three dogs. dog in the world. And it still has these. Right.